vacation so be safe and we pray that our prayers will go with you and we hope that uh, you get back home we want you to get back here safely from any danger seen and unseen so tonight let's get ready to stand as we get ready to hear the word of God tonight coming from our very own minister Porter as she comes and preach the word of God let's clap our hands in Jesus name amen praise the Lord everyone all right my sister already told you she said praise the Lord everyone all right now all right all right amen I know I'm in an apostolic church on tonight amen we're going to go directly to the scripture on tonight uh Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, a very familiar passage of scripture. If you're apostolic, you know this one. <laughs> if you don't know anything else, you know Acts chapter 2. Amen. I promise you I did not know what the pastor was going to preach on this morning. And he did, he does, he did not know what I'm going to preach on tonight. But I do believe that the Holy Ghost is talking to the church. So I'm excited always excited for confirmation amen acts chapter 2 starting at verse 37 and we'll read down to verse 47 acts chapter 2 verse 37 down to verse 47 and it reads, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Pastor, if you can pray over this message. Let us pray. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done, doing, and going to do. Thank you for this great salvation. Thank you for the plan of salvation, Lord God. We understand neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Teach us tonight, God. Touch your hand, maiden, right now, Lord God, to deliver thy word. For you're no respect of person, O oh God. If we make ourselves available, then God, you're willing to use us. Father, it is not about us, but it is about you. I pray, Lord, let this word, Lord God, touch our hearts, Lord God, that it will stir up the gift that is within us, Lord God. I pray that your will be done in this city. I speak, Lord God, over this congregation that there be a burden for the lost, oh God, burden for the backslider, oh God, that not only that, God, it would trigger us to pray, but it would trigger us to do something, Lord God, and not allow the cares of life, oh God, to overwhelm us, oh God, that we become complacent. Lord God, let your will be done. Help us tonight. Teach us tonight. Talk to us tonight. Stir it up to us tonight, oh God. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Let our ears be open right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on and shout unto God before you're seated. Come on and lift your voice up to the king before you're seated. Come on, we worship you, oh God. Lord God, we're grateful for this salvation. God, we're grateful, Lord God, that you would save us. God, we're grateful, Lord God, for the miracle, oh God. Come on, people of God, if you're grateful. I said if you're grateful. If you remember where you were before God reached down and saved you. If you remember the things that you were doing before God saved you. Lift up your voice with a voice of triumph. 
up. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the Holy Ghost. I'm so grateful for him saving me, saving us. Amen. I'm so, I'm so grateful that that never gets old to me. Acts chapter 2, the book of Acts, the plan of salvation, it never gets old to me. I remember when I was first at Victory, uh, you know, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. I didn't know Pastor Collins, and I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening to every word that he's saying, and uh, once we eventually, I got to, you know, be in the church, and he said, one thing about you, uh, he calls me Kiki. He was like, Kiki, one thing about you, the reason I knew you were saved because you would sit. You would sit and listen hard as I was preaching. He's like, I could preach so hard, and you would just be sitting and listening. But when I started teaching and preaching about Acts chapter 2, verse 38, your hands were up, and you were standing, and you were rejoicing. I knew, I knew that you were saved, so I, I never get tired of this Acts 238 gospel. It's always it's always something that should be dear and near to all of our hearts. Amen. It's something that should be on fire for us. But nevertheless, the title of this message on tonight is, What Does Revival Look Like? What does revival look like? If I, uh, for my subtitle, I would say this. This is more so what came to my mind is, uh, as God was talking to me, I, I said, revival looks like What? Revival looks like what, God? Look at your neighbor to say, revival looks like what? I, 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 I had to have, uh, you know, God had to talk to me and deal with me on certain things. And I said, ah, oh, this is what revival looks like. My God. So we're going to talk a little bit on tonight. Uh, what does revival look like? Some of this is going to be exactly what Pastor talked about on this morning. Pastor preached about uh, the power of the gospel. We know and he talked about uh, the gospel being the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We know that. And how it applies to our lives today is the death in repentance and uh, the burial uh, representing the baptism in Jesus' name and the resurrection, the Holy Ghost. We know that. I'm so glad. Uh, nobody can tell me that this does not exist because I got it for myself. Anybody got it for themselves? Amen. I'm so glad it's still happening. This is not a dead church. God God bless you, brother, for receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's the best thing that ever can happen to you. Amen. And so we know that this is what this is what the gospel is. This is what it's all about. And this is what the early church taught. This is what they believed. It is what they taught with a passion. It is what the early church lived out. It was evidence that the early church believed this because on the first day, on that day of Pentecost, uh, in one day, 3,000 were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Revival was booming in the beginning in the early church. So I began to think, and I, I've been talking a little bit here and there about it. So, I, uh, and God led me to this on tonight. So He said, "This is the message for the church. It needs to be spoken as a whole." I began to think as I was talking in prayer with God and um, seeing God. What did they do? God, uh, we're a revival church. I'm so grateful. If you, uh, you know, I'm so grateful. But I, I, I believe that there is no place like home. I'm so grateful for new life. I'm so grateful for a revival church. I'm so grateful uh, that souls go down in Jesus' name, not just on one day, but throughout the week. I mean, souls are being baptized and souls are being filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm so grateful. If you ever been to a church, a dead church, you're grateful for when you receive uh, the truth and have a revival church to be in. It's nothing just to patty cake about, but I'm grateful for a revival church. Amen. Amen. And so we are a revival church. We're not a dead church. Uh, but I begin to ask God, God, uh, we are a revival church, but how do we become a revival church like the first church? Like the, the, the church in the book of Acts. How, uh, how do we a revival church, God? I, souls are being saved, but I mean, they're, they're in one day, 3,000 were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. God, I want to get on that level. God, matter of fact, you promised, Lord, that we would do greater work. So, God, what did they do so I can so we can get there? And he said to me, uh, what the church of today must not forget is the fundamentals. 
We cannot forget the fundamentals. He broke it down. He said, Kiana, before you could read, you first had to know the alphabet. Before you could play a song, you first had to learn the scales and the chords. Before, uh, for those that play sports, before uh, you uh, play basketball, you had to learn the fundamentals of dribbling and passing and hand coordination. Uh, before you, before you could get to all the great stuff, you had to first learn the fundamentals. So I said, "Okay, God, remind me." Please remind me, Dad, just remind me again of the fundam fundamentals, God. Remind me of the basics that took place in the New Testament church so that we can have that today, God. And so I began to, to search the scriptures, uh, and I began to read, and he began to show me key fundamentals in the early church that allowed them to excel. And so really quickly, one of the fundamentals that he that was the key to the success in the uh, the first church was revival looking like prayer meetings and teaching. In Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 4, Acts chapter 6, the early church, the Bible says, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, there was rumbling of discontent. The Greek speaking believers complained about the Hebrew speaking believers saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should sit, uh, spend our time teaching the word of God, not run around running a food program. And so brothers select seven men who are well respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles, anybody apostolic in the house? I, I, I wonder if I'm in an apostolic. Is anybody apostolic in the house? Then we apostles, we apostolics can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word of God. We see this repeatedly in the, in the early church. In Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, we'll skip around a little bit. Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. It reads, at about the time King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church, he had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover, but while Peter was in prison, the church prayed. Everybody said the church prayed. The church prayed very earnestly for him. Skipping down to verse 12, this is in the NLT. When he realized this, he went to he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door in the gate, and a servant girl, girl, excuse me, a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it, was, it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. When they finally opened the door, they saw him, and they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them, uh, 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 excuse me, told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said, and then he went to another place. I, I'll stop here for a minute and just understanding God was is trying to tell us that revival looks like prayer meetings we can go throughout the scripture and see prayer meeting at the prayer meeting in the early churches prayer meetings and teachings uh the bible says that uh peter went through a child uh here here it was that one was killed james was killed but peter was then in prison so sometimes revival may look like persecution i, I won't go too fast but sometimes revival may look like persecution but in the in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the revival, we still have to pray. In the midst of the revival, I said we still have to pray. In the midst of the revival, I said we still have to be a praying church. We have to pray. I, I'm not talking about now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, that's good for, for, for our younger ones, but I'm saying the church as a whole, we got to pray. I mean, even our, matter of fact, even our younger ones don't even pray like that. We have prayer class. 
has to teach them how to get on their knees and how to call on the name of Jesus and how to intercede. I said the church must be a praying church. The church has to be a church that will call on the name of Jesus at their job. And the church has to be a church that will call when God is calling us to get up in the morning that we will wipe our eyes and say, Jesus, what thus saith the Lord? I said the church has to be a praying church. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know you're telling me I got to give up my sleep. You're telling me I got to give up my entertainment if God is calling me. You're telling me I, I got to give up. I'm saying the church must be a praying church. Now, when they begin to pray, God heard their prayers and he began to move. There was a breakthrough that took place. Peter was freed from the jail. I, I'm reading this book um, um, by Verbal Bean. It's talking about prayer. And uh, Verbal Bean, he's one of the preachers of old, had a dynamic ministry in his time period, uh, revival ministries all over the world and uh, uh, all over the country and abroad. And I'm re I was reading his book, and he talked about a time that he was doing revival and uh, him and, and the, another brother with him were praying, of course, all throughout the revival. He believed in prayer, and they were praying uh, before the revival. They prayed during the revival, and it was an explosive revival. I mean, souls being filled with the Holy Ghost and surplus. And, and he talks about after the revival was done, that God woke both him and the other brother up around in the early part of the morning, I believe it's like 4 a.m. He woke them up and uh, God put on their heart to intercede and travail. They didn't know what they were interceding about. They didn't know what they were travailing about, but they began to pray until, uh, but until they felt something break, they until they felt something break. And then they got up the next morning and they went on their plane to the next destination only to find out that as they're on the plane, the plane was about to crash into the ocean. And they began to pray again. But and the, the plane plane did land safely. But what they realized was that God had woke them up early in the morning to send the breakthrough before they even got on the plane. So before they already before they got on the plane, before the plane began to crash, they already knew that they were covered. I'm saying we got to be like the early church that will begin to pray uh, before the breakthrough, before we even see the breakthrough. We're sending the breakthrough before it even happens. I need a church. God is asking for a church huh, that will pray before they even see the breakthrough. Huh? A church that will believe before they even see the wall torn down. Huh? A church that will pray huh, beyond themselves. A church that will pray beyond their family. A church that will pray beyond their financial situation. A church that will pray huh, beyond their, their situations that's going on. Huh? Their health situations. Huh? Uh, God is calling for a church huh, that will pray. I wonder huh, if there's a church that will pray huh, beyond Belgrade into Canal huh, so that when the preacher goes to Canal huh, it's already laid for them huh, the hearts are ready to receive huh. I wonder if there's a church in Belgrade huh, that will preach beyond Belgrade huh, into Miami huh, into the seas huh. I wonder if there's a church huh, that will say I'll be like the early church huh, and I'll begin to pray huh. God I'll begin to pray huh. God if you want me to pray and to intercede huh. God I'll intercede huh. God, if this is what the only church did huh, to have the revival, God, use me, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I pray right now huh, for the canal points in the name of Jesus. Huh. God, I don't know who you're going to send, God, huh, but I pray for the harvest in canal point. Huh? Lord God, I pray for the souls, oh God. Huh? Every spirit, oh God, that's trying, Lord God, huh? to stop the work huh? that's to be done in this city huh? and in the city of Canal huh? and in Miami. Huh? God, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Huh? I wish we had a prayer. I know this is a message, huh? but I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost is trying to move. Huh? I, begin, I wish huh, that we would have a church that would begin to pray. Huh? Don't just look at me, huh? but God's spirit, uh, 
God, that our Basata is here. Oh God, I pray right now. I come against the spirit of Pharaoh that's trying to attack this city in the name of Jesus. Pharaoh, you must let your people go. You must let your let the people of God go. You must let his children go. Every spirit of addiction, every spirit of lust, every spirit of sexual immorality, it cannot, it cannot stay in this city. In the name of Jesus, I wish I had two or three that would just intercede. Pastors have been preaching on intercession. I know you got your family problems, and I know you got your situations, but can you intercede for that one that's looking to commit suicide right now? Can you intercede for that person that's getting raped right now? Can you intercede for the city and beyond? Somebody prayed for Bell Clay before there was ever a new life. God, I'm grateful. Somebody prayed, oh God, Lord God, for souls. Pray for you that when the preacher came, that your heart will receive it. God, I'm grateful. God, I pray, God, for the Lord God, I pray for the harvest in the city and the state of Florida, oh God, and beyond, God. Lord God, if this is the last hour, God, we need the souls of the harvest. God, I pray, God, that you will feel. Lord God, work on the hearts right now, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after the church, after the church began to pray and the breakthrough took place, hallelujah, go back to verse 17. Acts chapter 12, verse 17, after the breakthrough took place and after Peter was free, the Bible says in verse 17, Tell James and the other brothers what happened. And he said, and then it says, and then they went to another place. So after they prayed, tell your neighbor they went to work. After they prayed, they went to work. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that when uh, so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. <laughs> this is good and pleases God, our, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God, one mediator who can res- reconcile God and humanity, that man, Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom to everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. And I have been chosen as a preacher and an apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not exaggerated, just telling the truth. After, after, amen, we do, we pray. We got to pray. We got to be a praying church. But after we finish praying, we got to get to work. Exactly what Pastor literally just said, which brings me to my second point. Revival feels like giving up everything. 
Revival feels like giving up everything. And uh, what what I'm asking God, God, what are you talking about? Everything. Let's define that. I'm a very practical person and uh can't go through all of it but uh, one of the things that revival looks like giving up everything is giving up your money now uh, i know i know it's gonna get quiet and here it is i really didn't want to preach about it uh, but what god was telling me is i cannot allow what the false preachers have done uh, to corrupt the minds of people to stop me from preaching the truth it's in the word uh, uh, we're not trying as pastors always said we're not trying to take your money i'm telling you if you know what i job you know i'm not trying to take your money but what the church has to do is give up everything one of those things being financial because the work has to be done the buildings have to go up it takes money uh here it is acts chapter 2 verse 42 through 47 let me give you scripture for it and all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals including the lord's supper and to prayer a deep sense of of all came over all them uh, over them all and the apostles performed many miracles signs and wonders and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything everybody say everything they had they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need they worshiped together at the temple each day met in homes for the lord's supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising god and enjoying the goodwill of all the people and each day the lord added to the the fellowship those who were being saved i'm saying if we want the revival of the early church we have to give up everything everything i'm saying i'm not just gonna give when the wall is walked down or not down i'm gonna give towards it now because god i believe lord god that this wall has got to be knocked down that we can grow and expand i'm saying i'm gonna give before the project before he pastor even talks about the project i'm gonna give in anticipation i'm gonna give in expectation because the church of the early church they gave everything for the work of the kingdom uh even in the old testament church exodus chapter 36 verses 1 through 5 keeping it simple and the lord was gift uh, has gifted basil and olap and the other skilled uh, craftsmen with wisdom and ability to perform any task involved in the building the sanctuary let them construct and furnish a, a tabernacle just as the lord has commanded so moses summoned basil and o olap and all the others who were specific uh, especially gifted by the Lord and were eager to do the work. Moses gave them the materials donated by the people of Israel as uh, sacred offerings for the completion of the sanctuary. But the people continued to bring additional gifts each morning. Finally, the craftsmen who were working on the sanctuary left their work. They went to Moses and reported the people have given more than enough materials to complete the job the Lord has commanded us to do. I'm saying, I'm saying, I know, I know inflation is going up. And I'm saying, I know things and bills are coming. But I'm saying, if we want to be like the church, the early church, and we want the revival of the early church we have to give financially to the work of the ministry i'm saying i believe that god is trying to stretch us i'm saying you may say i don't know what you mean i don't know what you're saying since kiana you may not know but my bank account is in the negative but i'm saying god is trying to stretch us i'm saying god is trying to stretch us in our giving i'm a witness i'm a witness that if you increase your giving i'm giving when i didn't have and increase not only gave my tithes and my offering but increase and i'm saying god this does not make sense don't you see x y and b zeal uh z that z a bill that needs to be paid but i'm telling you that god will never let you out give him he's never gonna let you him have to owe you i'm saying that we give in anticipation of the revival god i believe that we're gonna be over 300 and so we're going to need things, God. We're going to need more Bibles. So here it is. God, we're going to need more chairs. So here it is. 
this. God, we're going to need more of this. Oh, here it is. I believe we are a giving church. But I'm saying I'm going a little ahead. But the pastor already talked about that we're shifting. There's things shifting. And I'm not a financial or prosperity preacher. But I believe that things are shifting. And if we just go out on faith and shift some things, shift in our finances, shift in our time, shift in things that God will bless us and multiply exponentially. That's a believer. You can believe it if you don't. If you want to, if you don't, that's fine. I'm just the message. I'm just giving the scripture. You do what you do with it. But another thing that we have to do in giving everything is giving of our time. Oh, I tell people time is money. My time is very important. If you waste my time, you just made me lose something. Some type of money, something you made me lose. So don't waste my time. But God is saying, I understand that time is valuable. I understand that time is valuable to you. But I'm outside of time. But what I'm asking you to give me is your time. Is your consistent time. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 do 29 uh the bible says this and uh actually we're we're just go down to verse 29 just for the sake of time uh, paul is talking to the church and how he has labored and, and and all of this and he says for this i labor often this is in the amplified often to the point of exhaustion striving with his, with his power and energy uh, which so greatly works within me uh, i'm saying i know i know there's not enough time in a day uh, i said i know Oh, I know you got to do this for the kids and for the family. But what Paul says is, as I gave my time, he somehow gave me strength to do more. As I gave my time, God, I don't know how, but he somehow gave me the strength to keep moving. I'm saying we got to be a church that won't just talk about it, but give in our time, giving up everything for the work of the kingdom. He also told me that, yeah, that the, the kingdom, revival looks like this giving up everything even to the point of suffering paul says this in second corinthians chapter 11 five different times the jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes three times i was beaten with rods once i was stoned three times i was shipwrecked once i spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea i've traveled on many long journeys i faced danger from rivers and from robbers i faced danger from my own people the jews all uh, as well as the, from the gentiles i faced uh danger in the cities and then in the, the desert i'm sorry this is in nlt and then the seas and i have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not I've worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and, and thirsty and I've often gone without food. I, I shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. And this is in the Amplified, making it simple. Besides those external things, there is the daily inescapable pressures of my concern for all the churches. Paul was talking to the saints. He was telling them, talking about them, uh, being. he was talking about his frustration. Huh? of how they're kind of listening to the false preachers and he's depicting what a true preacher looks like and what true re revival looks like and, and he says sometimes revival sometimes feels like you're getting beat up sometimes revival feels like you're going through even i'm not talking about as pastor said not talking about the mistakes that we make on our own but i'm talking about what bishop calls life's journey ah uh, you feel like i'm trying to do right but i'm still getting beat up i've been doing the right thing but god i still feel the pressure our oh, revival looks like this sometimes but here it is paul said but i didn't get distracted when i was getting beat up i, I continued i i continue to recite the mission i continue to recite the plan in my pain and in my suffering and in my persecution i still remember that this is the time this is where revival feels like i come to encourage somebody today because you feel like you're getting beat up you feel like nobody sees you you feel like you're alone but i'm saying stay strong because this is what revival feels like i'm talking to somebody that has been through you've given your time you've given your efforts but you still feel elements ailment 
in your body. I'm saying stay faithful because this is what revival feels like. It won't last always. One day we'll have a new body where we won't have to worry about the pain. But I can dance with the souls that the Lord allowed me to bring in. I'm saying I know that financially is a struggle. But stay faithful. This is what revival feels like. One day I'm going to have a mansion on a street paved with gold. I'm saying just stay faithful. This is what revival feels like. But it's worth it after a while. Which brings me to my third point. Revival. Revival feels like more harvest than labor. Revival feels like more harvest than labor. Uh, real quickly, I Acts chapter two, verse thirty-eight and, and verse forty-one. It talks uh, about we know we know the plan of salvation. It talks about in thirty-eight uh, as Peter's preaching this, and and then it goes and and uh, Peter's preaching. The Bible says in verse forty-one that three thousand were added, and I, I I'm I don't know what you call me. I think Mother Mother Ferguson says I'm kind of analytical, but it ran ran around my brain. I, that doesn't mean. Uh, God, we're a revival church, and and I, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to figure out how we, God, you're helping us. But twelve to three thousand, I don't even know how they did it. It's twelve, twelve souls huh, that were founded, huh, that that had the roots, huh, and three thousand new converts. God, that doesn't even make sense. Please tell me how they did it. Huh. And so then He took me to Acts chapter thirteen. I I don't have time to read it, but Acts chapter thirteen, huh, you read how Paul and Barnabas were sent out to be. Uh, apostle and missionaries and going to establish churches and in verse 52 they were the, the church in Antioch there were souls filled with the Holy Ghost by the masses and if you go down to Acts chapter 14 and you read about it they go back and see how the new converts are doing her and the new converts are doing great her and all of a sudden they said her they said here it is her uh verse 23 her, Acts chapter 14 verse 23 Paul and Barnabas also appointed elders in every church with prayer and fasting they turned the elders over to take the care of the Lord uh to take care of the Lord in whom they have put their trust in her so here it is I, I'm looking at this I guess analytically God this don't even make sense you start a church. Here Paul starts the church, but his role is to go start, establish other churches. But it's not enough people to be able to put uh, somebody that's been seasoned. So here it is, the new converts. Here he is choosing. And he's saying, uh, you got to go. I'm, I'm going to make you the pastor. I know you've only been saved three weeks, but I'm going to make you the pastor. I need you to stay in the word. I need you to stay in prayer. But here it is, you're going to be the pastor. And I know you've only been saved a week, but I need you to teach Bible study. I know all you know is Acts 2.38, but I need you to spread that to the city. And I know you've only been saved like two days, but I need you to go and teach Bible studies on the streets. I need you to go teach and proclaim the truth or something. Here that they even the new converts they had to get their hands dirty they couldn't say i don't know they couldn't say i don't i don't know enough i'm not elegant in speech i, I don't know the scriptures but the, but here it is why did god do that because neither paul or any of the people in antioch could take credit for the church being added the souls being added all they could say when thousands were filled with the holy ghost is just god did it all they can say is, but God, all they can say is, God's doing this. How are you teaching this Bible study? I don't know. I just study, and I allow God to move, and I allow God to speak. I'm saying, I'm saying that this is what revival feels like. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel. Urge them to come in that my house may be full. I'm saying, I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm saying, the, the God showed me like this. I don't want to be an or church. O-R. I don't want to be an or church, people of God, but I want to be an and church. A-N-D. I don't want to be an or church. Many times you hear uh, there an outreach church or they're a praying church or they're a worshiping church. But I want to be an and church. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And, and uh, the Lord added to the church daily uh, and such, be, such shall be saved. Uh, they all continue with one accord and prayer and 
faith and supplication. I'm saying we got to be an air church. And if you're telling me, if you're telling me, Sister Kiana, I can't do it. If you're telling me this is based off of a pedigree, if you're telling me this is based off of age, I'm saying this, tell that to the woman, the Samaritan woman that just had a conversation. And in that conversation, she began to have revelation. And the whole city began to be on fire with revival. If you're saying it's based off of age, tell that to the young boy that had five loaves of fish, five loaves and two fish that helped Jesus produce a whole revival service. I'm saying if you say that you're saying it's of age i'm too old tell that to abraham that even in his old age produced the promise if you're saying i don't have the speech or the pedigree i'm saying tell that to the disciples who the bible talks about is unlearned i'm saying everybody has to get involved in the revival that the first church produced the same holy ghost that's within them is the same holy ghost that was within us let's stand on our feet I'm saying we got to be an end church. Uh, I'm so grateful for the prayers, uh, but don't just stop at the prayers. We got to be an end a teaching church. Uh, I'm so grateful for, for those that teach Bible studies. I'm so excited for our young people that want to teach Bible studies. Uh, but I'm saying it doesn't stop there. We got to give. We got to give in our time. We got to give in our finances. We got to give exponentially to the kingdom. You're, I'm telling you that God has called you. The word has been given. The word has been given, saints. The anniversary service is to tell, it's to tell, uh, Khalil, can you give me a, the anniversary service is to tell us where we're going. <laughs> it was clearly given uh, that God is calling for the impossible. <laughs> you may not have been saved long, but you know what God is calling you. You may say, I don't know what God is calling me. But here it is, you have a leadership that can tell you and lead you in the right direction. What God is leading uh, and calling you to do in your life. Here it is. God has told us that we're shifting. Pastor's has been taught on the tabernacle plan, how you had to move. Pastor's given us a warning saying, you can't stay in the same position. Uh, 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 you can't, I don't look, uh, I, I, I told Pastor, Pastor I, I don't look, whatever, whatever you need me to do, God, Pastor, if I need to move out of position uh, to be in somewhere else that's needed, then, then so be it, because I, I want to move with the cloud, because if you don't move with the cloud and the fire by day, then Pastor taught it based off of the scriptures, they died. They died. They didn't have fire to keep them warm. They didn't have the shade to comfort them from the heat. I'm saying we're shifting. You know, you may say I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, very intellectual with my words, but I'm saying here it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. God used to a part unlearned. I remember a mother in our church. She couldn't read. But God but at least read. Them. She could not read anything else. She was able to read and tell others about this God. I'm saying this, people of God. I'm saying this is what revival is. Now, if you're willing to step up to this, this is for the church. All of us, myself and God. I'm saying, come down to the altar. If you're saying, I want to be a part of the revival. Don't don't leave. Don't do it without me, God. Don't don't leave me, God. But God, I, I'm nervous. God, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. But God, I believe that you're shifting me. That you're calling me, God. I'm saying, come up to this altar now and get prayed. I'm saying it's gonna take boldness. Even Peter prayed for boldness. So we have to pray for boldness. God, you're shifting. You're shifting us. You're shifting us, God. I know we're only five years, God, but, but you're calling us to do greater works, God, in this time, God. Lord, God, I don't know what that looks like, but God, if, if you can just show me, I'll just say step after step, God. I, I, I don't know where I'm going, but God, if you got 
me. Lord God, I'll follow Jesus. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Every, every hands, hands up, eyes closed. If you believe that God has called you for here for a purpose, I know that you're here for a purpose. Even if you've been saved two weeks, even if you've been saved a day, God has been called you for a purpose for such a time as this. God, I pray over the church right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray for boldness to take place over the saints. Oh God, I pray that you give us our urgency, God. Give us our urgency, oh God. Lord God, to do the will. Lord God, don't let me get distracted. Lord God, don't let us get caught up with the cares of life, God. But Lord, keep my feet. Keep our feet on solid ground. Oh God, I pray. I pray, oh God, Lord God, those, Lord, that are battling, Lord God, they don't even know that they're battling because God, you're calling them. And so the enemy's trying to fight. But I pray for peace of mind right now, God. Lord God, I pray for peace right now, God. I pray, Lord God, that you would loose, Lord God, the people of God. Loose that mouth to speak boldly. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that the armor of God be upon them, oh God. That as they go out, Lord God, that they be covered, oh God. Don't let this message, oh God. I pray, don't let this message just say that this was a good message. But Lord God, allow us to put move in action. Lord, you tell us, Lord God. Lord God, to have our feet with the gospel of peace. Why? So that we can run. Lord, help us to run. And when we get weary, God. When we, when we get weary, God. You're there to hold us, oh God. You're there to carry us, oh God. Because, Lord God, the revival that is taking place, we can only say it's only of the Lord. You're using us, but God, I don't even know how. Lord God, you're funding this, but God, I don't even know. God, I believe, God. I believe, oh God. Strengthen the body right now, oh God. Help us, Lord God, to stay focused. Lord God, as we are in that last hour, oh God, keep us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, use me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, use me. Oh, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. You can use anything, Lord, please use me. Can we sing that one more time? Oh. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You can use anything, Lord, use me. Oh, take 
my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. You can use anything, Lord, please use me. We thank God. I pray that you will allow God to use you. One man cannot do it. One family cannot do it. What happens is that we'll get stirred up with a message. Then all of a sudden, it will die down. If you can do me a 